So, which rocks have dinosaurs? Welcome to the Natural History of Dinosaurs. My name is Benjamin Berger. I'm a paleontologist teaching at Utah State University in the heart of Utah's dinosaur country in Vernal. In this video, I'll briefly outline the characteristics of rocks that likely preserve dinosaurs. So like the motion picture industry's rating system, there's actually a rating system that's used in the United States for how great a particular unit or rock layer uh, is in terms of how amazing its fossils are. It was actually first developed by the U.S. Forest Service, but it's now used by many agencies to classify the likelihood that incredible fa fossils will be found in a particular formation. Now it's tied to mapped geological units called formations. A formation is any layer of rock which can be mapped and differentiated from other units by its color, lithology, and other characteristics of the rocks. Now there are five classes with the class five being the, the best type of rock to find a dinosaur or other ancient creatures. Class one are units of rock which are not likely to contain fossils at all. These include uh, igneous, metamorphic rock, or rocks that are really old, older than multicellular organisms. Now here's an example of a class one. Uh, this is a basalt which is a cooled magma. So no fossils here. Class two are units of rock that are generally younger than 10,000 years, such as this recent river deposits. They don't likely contain fossils because they're just too young. And this is an example of some alluvium or river transported sediment. This is a classic class two. Class three are units that often are uh, marine units like shales or poorly studied. Uh, sometimes these rock units are ones that researchers have just not found very many fossils there before. Uh, there's a possibility of finding fossils in, and some class 3 units have, have really great invertebrate fossils, but they're not particularly known for dinosaur fossils. Sometimes a class 3 can be raised to a class 4 when new discoveries are made. Now here's some marine limestone. Uh, that might be considered a 3. Likely no dinosaurs here but possibility of some other types of fossils. And here's a dark colored marine shale, which also likely doesn't have dinosaurs. And here's some arcosic sandstones, which I would consider a class three. Class four are units that have relatively high chance of finding fossils, uh, but it's often covered by vegetation or soils. And fossils tend to be rarer than we see in class five. Here I'm prospecting in the Denver Formation in Colorado, which does contain dinosaurs, but they're rare and the rocks lay under a urban city of Denver, and outcrops are tricky to find. Class 5 are fantastic units to find dinosaur fossils. They're well studied and many paleontologists uh, study or work on these rock units to study the fossils recovered in them. Some of the classic uh, class 5 formations here in Utah include the Morrison, the Cedar Mountain, and the North Horn formations. Um, here's some other pictures of class 5 rock units. You'll note that most of these are found in badlands, and that's because they tend to have very alkaline uh, rocks. Um, they also tend to be found in dry deserts so that they lack that vegetation that typically covers a, a class 4 unit. Now that you've watched this video, you should be able to differentiate rock units on the characteristics of the likely preservation of fossils, and in particular, those dinosaurs that we find so fascinating. 